On today's EMN5, I'd like to talk about Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Not something you see too often, but a great presentation when you do. And another name for it is herpes zoster oticus, and you'll see why in just a second. So like many EMN5s, let's pretend we don't know what this is going to be about today and start off with a case. So we have a 22-year-old male first presenting with some left ear pain that he's had for a few days, but this is no otitis media. He says he also notes today that the left side of his face started drooping, kind of becoming more weak, and the left ear now on the outside is having some swelling as well. On your review of systems, he does admit to a little bit of tinnitus, but nothing consistent. And this is his picture on exam. You can see he has both lower facial droop and also some upper weakness as well, as well as a little bit of a rash around his ear, and we'll take a better look at that in a second. So on the otoscope, this is what you see, a little bit of hemorrhage, possibly some vesicles. And on a better part of his ear exam, you see he actually has vesicles on the inside and around the outside of his ear as well. So now I would ask you, what is this? And as you know, this lecture is going to be on Ramsey Hunt syndrome. So what exactly is Ramsey Hunt syndrome? Well, like I said before, it's herpes zoster of the ear, herpes zoster oticus. It's a varicella reactivation, reactivation, just like herpes zoster, but it's of the geniculate ganglion, which means that it comes out in the facial nerve and eighth nerve, creating this pain and facial droop that is very characteristic of Ramsey Hunt. There are a lot of different ways that varicella can reactivate. In, in an immunocompetent host, you can have, for example, shingles, herpes zoster ophthalmicus is another common presentation, so that's coming out in the eye, can cause uveitis, keratitis. Some of the motor neuropathies can also be caused by reactivation of varicella, such as Guillain-Barre, or you can see stroke-like symptoms, and also viral meningitis is pretty common. And then here's our player, herpes zoster oticus, also known as Ramsey Hunt. So there's three symptoms that you need to be Ramsey Hunt. First of all, ipsilateral facial paralysis. You need ear pain that usually precedes the rash, and then this rash that comes on, which is usually vesicular and can be in the auditory canal or the auricle. Some patients have tinnitus, some vertigo. You can also have some changes in taste in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and sometimes lacrimation. Now here you have a patient with facial paralysis, and it's always good to go through a differential for this to make sure that you're not missing something more serious. Obviously a stroke is a big concern, but that would involve more of the lower face. In Ramsey Hunt and Bell's palsy, for example, you see an upper and lower facial paralysis, which is reassuring in this case. Sometimes trigeminal neuralgia can cause facial paralysis, Lyme disease, the classic tick paralysis, or acoustic neuromas. And again, we have our player, Ramsey Hunt. So what's our treatment for this? You're going to start off with an antiviral. This is varicella after all. So valcyclovir is a great option three times a day for seven days. Now steroids plus minus. The Bell's Palgy regimen is about 60 of prednisone for seven days. I think in this case, in a patient that you're not concerned about giving a steroid to, hopefully it'll help clear up their symptoms or lessen the pain for these patients. And of course, pain control. Think about anything topical, for example, by the ear, and of course, something systemic to help them get through this. Some patients can have some pretty significant vertigo. Meclizine or Valium, you can send them home with either of those if they seem to help when they're in the ER. And lastly, eye protection in these patients that have significant facial droop such that they can't close their eye all the way. Especially at nighttime, you need to prevent corneal irritation or having their eyes dry out. So you usually just recommend some artificial tears every hour while they're awake and some ointment at night. And of course, have these patients follow up within about a week or two. So three to remember. Ramsey Hunt is the other name for varicella herpes zoster oticus, otherwise herpes zoster of the ear. The triad is going to be ipsilateral facial paralysis, some pain in that ear, and then that vesicular rash in and around the ear. Treatment is going to be antiviral, some steroids, and of course symptom management. I did just want to throw in this House Brackman facial paralysis scale. It might be something useful to you to look up while you're on a shift with one of these patients to describe in your note the type of paralysis. Thanks again for joining us on EMN5. We look forward to seeing you next week.